In this video, I'm gonna go through the GoStream desktop software and companion integration. Let's get into it. A little while ago, I did a video on the OC GoStream deck, a four input video switcher for live streaming and other video productions. As far as recommending this piece of gear, this is what I had to say. But for the most part, for most people, I would say, the OC GoStream deck is a great choice, as long as they come out with that desktop software very soon. OC just released a beta version of their software. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And although you can do all the setting changes in the GoStream deck itself, one of the most requested things has been a desktop software. And related to that, also the integration with BitFocus Companion for more automated productions. They've done both. The software is available for both Windows and Mac. As of this recording, the only way to run the piece of software is to update your GoStream's firmware to version 2.1.0 beta. Both the firmware and the software can only be downloaded via their OC GoStream Deck Facebook user group. I'll link it in the description below. Here we are in the GoStream software. I'm using the Mac OS version. It's available both in Windows and Mac. Now, before I get into the rest of the demo here, let me tell you a little bit about my setup. So I, on this top right window is the output of the ghost stream. So I have input one right here. I have input two down here. I have still one. I have still two filled out or uh, I have pictures in them. So we'll go through on how to set those up. But before I go into the rest of this main layout, Let's look at the uh, top menu items a little bit here. Under file, we have load, save, and connect. Now load and save are to save and load configurations for your GoStream. Connect is cool though too. When you turn on the GoStream software, it detects or looks for an attached GoStream via USB. I'm happy to say like the ATEM and ATEM Mini Pro line of products, you can now connect to your ghost stream via a network connection. It just has to be on the same network. And here I went to connect and it automatically detected my ghost stream, but I'm already attached via USB. This means that I don't need to be right near the ghost stream. I can do it remotely either through another computer. I could even do it remotely in another location if I VPN into the same network. So that's really cool. Then we have our macro section where we can set up all our macros here. The streaming section is to load and to remove all your settings as far as streaming content is concerned, where you stream to. Uh, later on, we'll see where you can set that all up and then we can save all that streaming uh, configurations as well. Then set, we have about the pretty much about the software. And settings is where you find a lot more information that might be more useful, especially the network settings. So let's get into the main configuration here, uh, main layout of the GoStream software. The GoStream software is mainly ma laid out in two main columns. The left column here corresponds to all the buttons that are on the physical GoStream. So any changes I make here, I see it on the lights. I see the lights changing on the switcher itself. And then the right column here pretty much corresponds to all the menu items that you have when you press the menu button on the physical switcher. And we'll get into that in a moment. But first, let's concentrate on the left side here. I'll zoom in a little bit. We have our program inputs, our preview inputs. We are upstream key, downstream key, fade to black. We have our different transition effects. So if I go back to our output here, I have input one as the program, input two as the preview. So if I want to do the transition, I can press the auto button here. And of course we can change the different type of transition to a dip. Let's change it back to a wipe and back to a mix here. You can also do some jump cuts between the two uh, inputs or the between the program and the preview by hitting the cut button. The other way to do a jump cut is just by going to the, the program itself and just changing it directly. So those are two ways to do jump cuts. Then we have our 
services that we're doing live stream. None of them are set right now, so they're all grayed out. But once these are set, then you can choose between the three different services that you set up. We have our record area, we have our playback area. And so we'll get into more of the settings on this side pretty soon. But this is pretty much corresponding to the buttons. And I will admit it is easier to or faster to press the physical buttons on the switcher itself. But this would be good for remote type of things. The way that we'll save more time using the software is when we get into the settings area right now. Focusing on the settings area or column, pretty much we can change every setting on the ghost stream through the piece of software here. Now I'm not going to go through every one of these items, but I'll point a few things out here. So let's go into, of course we can change the Luma and Chroma keys settings, but let's go into the picture in picture. I have my fill source as line one. So let's go back to our preview. I'm going to set the program to input two, and then we're going to turn on our picture in picture here. So we can see the picture in picture on the top right of the output here. The cool thing is here, I can change and drag and drop this window of the picture in picture, which you can't do actually in the A10 mini piece software. Now, if you're doing this on the ghost dream switcher itself, the physical switcher by going through the menus, you'll, first of all, you'll have to find the menu item where this is, and then you can really only go to the actual number and adjust the numbers. But here we can drag and drop, which is really cool. And then we can go through all the different other settings here, such as super source. We can't drag and drop the different layouts of the super source but you're still stuck with the different layouts that they do give you. Moving on to the audio mixer tab, we have some settings for our transitioning to the audio inputs. Then we have our audio mixer button here, which brings up the audio mixer panel. Now this is where we can set up and change all the settings for all our mic inputs, including our HDMI inputs as well. We have our auxiliary input, and then we have our main program uh, settings here as far as audio is concerned. The one glaring thing that's missing is seeing the audio levels. I can't tell if any of my microphones are too low or clipping. They need to have the audio levels showing here. The only way to see the audio levels on the ghost stream is through the multi view. And there's a little panel there that you can see to show the audio levels. The other thing that I don't like is to get to this audio panel here, configuration panel, you need to press this button here. This button needs to be more accessible in the sense of they need to put another audio mixer button on this main panel here to get to it quicker. Sometimes it's not one click away because the audio mixer tab is not selected. So I have a feeling that I'm always going to have the audio mixer tab uh, readily available, but it'd be nice if they can make the audio mixer button uh, a button on the left panel here. I get why they wanted to do this layout. And so you can't show both at the same time because this is an extensive type of configuration panel here, but they need to have that button readily accessible. Moving on to the still images tab, we have the area where we can load up images to our switcher. No longer do we need to take the SD card out and load images that way. We can just do it all through this software here. This is where we can change what still what slot still one or still two looks to and this can easily be changed through macros as well moving on to the streaming tab this is where we can put in and paste in our streaming key we can change the quality of our stream the one glaring thing that's missing here is the ability to use custom rtmp servers here so but you have to use one of their services they list on their drop down menu here now the all the major services are here, such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. One of the things that is missing is, let's say, Amazon Shopping or Amazon Streaming. So it would be nice to have the ability to choose your own custom RTMP server. Sometimes I want to have a local RTMP server to stream to as well. Going into the Play and Record, this is where we can do some of our basic settings for playback of video. There is no way that I can see to load up videos through this interface, not like the still images. 
So that would be a nice addition to be able to load up Im uh, videos this way. Finishing up on the settings tab, this is where we can change the layout of our multi view, change the input settings of our mic inputs from mic to line. We have our source selection here. Most of these are color output settings. And then we have our auxiliary input where you can change it from NDI to SD card to USB inputs. The rest of it is the output settings for the uh, switcher itself. And one nice change is here is the HDMI 2, we can change it before it was just set to multi-view only, but we can change it to any of the inputs or preview and program outputs as well. And then we can change the button brightness here and I see it changing on my switcher itself and we can do the fan control as well. So this is a very convenient piece of software that has made my life a lot easier since the addition of this piece of software. So this is an overview of the GoStream software, which has made my life so much easier. Here we are in Companion. I'm running version 3.2.2 .2 on my Mac. I've already downloaded and installed the GoStream Companion plugin or module. You basically have to put it in the right directory. And so follow the directions on where to put it. But once you have it installed or copied over to the right place and you start up Companion, you should be able to see it here in your ad connections here. If you don't see it, that means you didn't copy it into the right place. But once you do, then you have, you can add your connection. And basically you just have to put in the IP address. Now remember companion communicates with your different devices through the network. So it's important that you get your IP address of your GoStream switcher. Once we've established our connection, we'll have a green checkbox here. Now we can start creating our buttons. Let's go to our buttons tab. And now you can see that we have our presets for our GoStream deck. They pretty much give us every type of preset that we need with the exception of a few things. And I'll get to that in a moment, but we want to do a jump cut between input one and two. We can simply drag and drop input one and two into our buttons layout. Let's go into our web view here of companion. And you can see we have a simple jump cut between the two inputs. But let's say we want to do a transition between the two, a mixed transition. So the way we do that is we want to set input one as the preview and then set perform an auto transition or set input two as the preview and perform an auto transition. And they're, this is where they're missing a preset for that. You would think they would have a preset for that, but they don't, but we'll, so we'll have to do a little bit more work. So let's clear our buttons layout. Let's go to our preview, set input one as our preview, input two as our preview. And again, we're gonna do a little bit more work here. So let's add an additional action here. Let's search for auto and say perform auto transition. Let's go to input two and we're gonna do the same thing, perform auto transition. So now as we go to our button layout here, it's performing the auto transition. As you can see, it's doing it in a one second transition. So we wanna speed that up. So we're gonna to have to do some additional work here and I'm going to search for rate. Say transition rate, and we're gonna set the transition rate to 0.5. And you need to drag and drop this before you perform your auto transition. So now we set the 0.5 and then do the auto transition. Let's do the same for input two. Change the change rate. Make sure we say it 0.5 and you can put it above perform auto transition. You can actually do it before you set your preview source, but you just have to make sure it's before perform auto transition for this to work. So let's go into our web buttons here. And now you can see we have a faster transition. So this has been a quick demo of the companion integration with our GoStream deck. The desktop software makes the GoStream deck a more complete package. I haven't been able to recommend it up to this point because of the missing software, but now I can. They've really made the software as straightforward as possible. Inherently, this type of gear is not the simplest and there's a bit of a learning curve, but I'm happy to say that this piece of software doesn't complicate things and it actually gets you, helps you get through some of the clunkiness when trying to do all the settings in the unit itself. Now the companion integration was a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting that, 
But now that it's here, I can see this being used in more bigger productions as well. In the near future, I'm going to be doing a video on using the GoStream Deck with my A10 Mini Pro, giving me a total of seven inputs using the companion software. But overall, I really like what the updates they've released in this time. Now, I'm really excited to see what OC will release in the future as well. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.